my dear children welcome to business and accounting grade 10 syllabus uh, now we have uh, started this subject as a basket subject uh, for all level in the all level syllabus and uh, uh, in business and accounting studies formerly known as commerce in the subject selection uh, we learn about businesses and a little bit of the accounting part related to businesses right um, this syllabus you may know some of you may know some of you may don't know uh, if you may not know I'll just give a brief explanation about the subject um, this is a basket subject it's up to you to select business and accounting studies or any other subject which comes in the basket but if you select this subject this particular subject that is my subject business and accounting studies um, this directly lays the path for a level commerce stream so if you are intending to take on commerce for your a level advanced levels this subject directly lays the path and the very basics of all three the main two subjects in advanced level uh, the main two subjects by saying that I mean the accounting subject and the business studies subject uh, a little bit of small amount of economics is also involved in your all level business and accounting studies so um, <clears throat> let's take a start with a, a simple introduction we'll start with the content your grade 10 subjects lineup right this is the subject topics lineup all these topics are related to grade 10 so uh, these 12 topics must be covered within one year that is your grade 10 year of study let's take the first topic for an example background of business this topic is completely uh, giving you the basic concepts of business with a little bit of evolution into the evolution of business the way businesses came into the world and how businesses have evolved with the evolution of humans that is background of business uh, you will learn a little bit of stakeholders you're going to learn in the future what these words mean if you don't know and a little bit of uh, evolution of business the stakeholders of a business and why are stakeholders involved in these businesses today that is the first lesson children second lesson business environment internal environment and external environment of a business now you should know that there are separate parties operating inside a business you should recognize them and external environment that is the outer world outside world there are a number of parties number of parties many 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 forms and factors that affect businesses and the way they operate so in this chapter you are going to learn about those internal factors or internal parties let's say people people inside a business internal and external parties which are in the outside world outer world those factors and the uh, main strengths weaknesses and uh, in the outside world you will learn about opportunities and threats 
which exist and which affect any business. That is the second lesson and we are done with that. We are moving on to the third lesson, business organizations. Many types of business organizations in the world today. We are going to learn about private sector, public sector, small scale businesses, micro, and large scale businesses. Likewise, profit, profit oriented and non-profit oriented. Businesses are there which do not target or which do not have an aim to earn profit. Interesting content. That is business organizations. Fourth lesson, introduction to accounting. As I told you, a little bit of accounting. Not going into the complex, the, the final accounts. This is an introduction. You know that accounting is the language of a business. A business communicates the internal and the operational information and the performance of a business through their accounts. There you go. Introduction to accounting. Fifth lesson. Accounting equation. More accounting for you. Sixth lesson. Dual impact of transactions. Again, more accounting. More accounting. Seventh lesson, prime entry books, more accounting, bookkeeping and accounting, which goes on until the end of the process, accounting process. Uh, you will get those lessons further in the grade 11 syllabus. That is the seventh topic. We are moving on to eighth topic, cash book and petty cash book. Guess what? More accounting. Ninth lesson. Bank account and bank reconciliation. More accounting. I'm not going to explain to you what is the content and how the subtopics have been arranged because for you which uh, who are starting the syllabus, who are starting the subject, uh, accounting may not be a familiar thing. So, we'll move on step by step to the accounting lessons. So, another accounting lesson for you and another one, 10th topic, 10th lesson. Purchases journal, sales journal and general journal, all books of accounting. Trial balance, another accounting lesson. Finally, the last topic. That is the correction of accounting errors. Guess what? Another accounting lesson. Right, so let's let's um, make a layout here. One, two, three business education or the basic business concepts and environments of business and organizations which exist in business. Three lessons into theory part and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine lessons into the accounting part. There you go. I hope you got an idea about the syllabus that you are about to start. We are about to start. This is the topics lineup of grade 10 business and accounting subject. Well, shall we move on? The cover page of your textbook, grade 10, textbook, chapter 1. Background of business. The content of the first lesson, chapter 1. 
chapter one talks about basic concepts of business as you saw as as i explained chapter one is background of business the basic concepts under the first chapter these subtopics are gonna they're gonna be discussed first one business concepts the basics of business second one business objectives the targets or aims businesses have they have different aims different goals remember that not only profit remember third subtopic consumer needs and wants we are going to talk about you and me the general public consumers everybody everyone in the society is a consumer a little bit of consumer needs and wants fourth subtopic manufacturing businesses fifth factors of production production a very important factor a very important area in businesses and we move on to the second main part in the first chapter stakeholders i told you when we started this session when we started the syllabus when i explained to you the content the topics line up i told you in the first lesson you're going to learn a little bit of stakeholders the people in a business stakeholders under that we have the first sub topic stakeholders introduction and the second subtopic objectives of stakeholders different different stakeholders people in a business that is the simple term i can give you people in a business they have different targets different goals so we are going to talk about those a little bit right i hope you are clear with the subtopics and the content of the chapter one shall we this is the start of your subject from chapter one with this subtopic well are you surprised first of all you have to know what is a business this is business and accounting studies so you should know what is a business first what is a business what is a business why are they here in our society in our world why are they here what do they do businesses why do we need them what is the requirement we have for a business do you know these things let's find out what is a business read out with me the definition a business is any economic activity which produces goods and provides services any economic activity any activity what do i mean by economic children money is involved a value transactions resources everything with a value anything with a value should be involved in a business so economic activity money is involved valuable transactions those activities which produces goods and provides services businesses produce goods and provide services is there a difference 
Let me explain to you. Producing in simple terms means making. Producing means making. Making goods. What are goods? I don't know. Do you know what are goods? Let me explain to you. Goods, anything that you use, that you consume to satisfy yourselves. Anything that you consume. Or the simple word is that you use to satisfy your wants, needs and wants. So, goods are made, produced by businesses. Or sometimes they provide services. Anything that you use, that you consume is a good. Then what are services? Same thing. Any activity which you use, any activity which you like to have, like to get, serve yourself. What for? To satisfy something that you want. To satisfy your needs and wants. You use somebody's effort, activity. Those are also produced by businesses. So, this is the basic definition, children. The book definition, the textbook definition. Economic activity, any economic activity which makes goods or gives services to us, to humans, in order to satisfy our needs and wants. Simple, very simple definition. I can make it even more simple. You will get marks in your examination for this definition. You will definitely get marks. If you have a hard time remembering the long sentence, I'll give you a simple one, a short one. You can remember that. A shorter, short and sweet but the same definition, which will earn you marks. Read it. Any economic activity done to fulfill needs and wants. You don't have to say any economic activity which produces goods or which provides services. Businesses do all those things. What for? Businesses do all those things. What for? To satisfy our needs and to give us what we want. So you can say a business is any economic activity done to fulfill our needs and wants. Simple definition, children. You can choose whatever you like. That is a business. Let's talk about how businesses came to the world. How businesses came to this world. What do you think? You tell me, what do you think? How did businesses come into the world? One beautiful day, a business just fell out from the sky. Do you think? Uh, is that the picture that you had in mind? Businesses just, a business just appeared somewhere and everybody was happy to see the business. No, no children. 
businesses just did not drop out of the sky. Businesses evolved with human evolution, with us, evolved, started from a very simple activity, grew, expanded, and came to the situation, the condition today. Today, the businesses, businesses in this world are unimaginative. You can't imagine what sort of, what types of businesses in which fields. There are various types of businesses in numerous fields. You can't imagine sometimes, right? Let's talk about how businesses came to this condition, this, this level at present. It's very interesting, children. Do you know how businesses started? Do you know why a business was formed somewhere in the world for the very first time? Do you know how and why? Let's find out. Let's focus on the top shelf. Top shelf. What do you see here? What do you see? You tell me. What do you see here? Self-sufficient. What do you know about being self-sufficient? Maybe you don't know. Let me give you an idea about being self-sufficient. You don't need anything. You don't require you don't ask anything or buy from anyone else. You produce whatever you need, whatever you like to have, whatever you want. You make everything by yourself. Families make everything that they want by themselves. Father makes, produces, the rice for the children, the vegetables, the crops. Mother produces the clothes, the dresses for the children, cooks and household items. Everything is produced by your family or by that unit. No, nothing is bought. That is self-sufficient. Do you think that's practical today? In the present day? No children. This was the ancient times. The king's era. Historical age. Those days there were no businesses in the society. So everyone had to make or provide themselves what they wanted by themselves. Simple as that. That is the self-sufficient era. This is an age. Age, a time period. Ancient. Very ancient. In the king's era. This time period existed. Not today, children. Nobody is self-sufficient. Nobody can produce everything that they want today by themselves. It's not practical today. So, in the ancient age and ancient times, the king's era, everybody produced what they wanted, what they needed, by themselves. That era is called the self-sufficient era. I have another 
special term here direct production in the self-sufficient era direct production happened what is direct production producing everything that one wants by oneself so self-sufficient being self-sufficient means you are doing you are involved in direct production I'll repeat direct production means producing or making that is the simple word making whatever you need or whatever you like to have whatever you want by yourself by yourself that is direct production remember children it's not possible today nobody can produce everything that he and his family or she needs with her family what her family needs by herself or by himself it's not practical today so direct production meant being self-sufficient being self-sufficient meant people were doing involved in direct production let's move on children with that understanding about the self-sufficient era or the direct production time of direct production we can move on to the next stage what can you see here barter system how do you pronounce this word barter barter it's not barter it's barter barter system I'm sure that you have heard about this barter system children barter system means exchanging goods with other goods exchanging goods with other goods exchanging why did the society move on to this stage why children in your textbook in your grade 10 textbook the very first introduction to business concepts starts with this sentence with the social existence of humans developed the needs and wants of humans expanded broadened what does that mean our existence human existence developed evolved as I told you in the beginning businesses did not just drop into the world a business didn't appear like a tada moment no businesses did not just appear in this world they evolved with human evolution remember remember I told you human evolution our evolution with our evolution businesses evolved so with the social existence as the social existence developed which means simply existing in the society as units as family units or as individuals the existence broadened developed you now grew we were evolving humans as humans we were evolving we have been evolving from the beginning but when the the, the existence when the, uh, the the needs and wants were getting more becoming more and more the existence developed and families were having more children the father or the mother could not produce everything that everybody wanted 
the children, they wanted more. And the families, they wanted more, 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 more things. That's why people started to exchange. Exchange the goods that they had with other goods other people had. They were exchanged. Right? You can clearly see the example, the picture, the image on the left hand side, the corner. It says barter. Can you see? Barter. As I told you, barter system was exchanging goods with other goods. Right? So barter system can be simply shown as the way the picture shows you. Remember, not only goods were exchanged with other goods, services also exchanged for goods. There were people who are ready to exchange services with other goods. Let's see. Can you see this lady? Do you see this lady? She is milking the cow, which means she's making or extracting milk. Milk. She's producing milk. So this lady maybe is having she's having children of her own so she has a, a a farm a cow farm and she's milking her cows she has milk can you see this guy this person who is right here He comes with a, a tool, something like a wrench, comes with a tool. He says, I can trade 10 hours of plumbing per month. For a month, he says, I can trade 10 hours of plumbing for 2 liters of milk. He says, he is ready to give his service in exchange for milk. He's asking for milk from the lady, cow's milk. And he's giving a service, plumbing. You know who is a plumber, you know what, what plumbing is, right? Pipe work. He's ready to uh, give his service to service, maybe pipelines or whatever that uh, the, the, the woman needs at her household. He's ready to give that service to the woman in exchange for the milk. Very basic transaction. Remember children, what you should bear in mind here, what you should bear in mind here is that, take this into your heads, no money. There were no money. Ancient times. Still, we are in this age of time. So, no money. No money. As I told you, ancient age, ancient times, there were no money existing in the society. Remember, people were exchanging goods with other goods. Right. So, since there were no money, People were exchanging goods and services for other goods and other services. Take it to your heads, children. Very important point. Barter system is the start of trading. There you go. Your past papers, your examination papers have asked in many years what is the start 
of trading when did trade start how did trade start trading started with the barter system trading started with the barter system so something to remember trading started with the barter system right since there were no money people were exchanging goods with other goods and goods with services that is barter system let's move on there were so many flops difficulties in the barter system so many flops you know it's not easy to exchange something with something else what if that person does not like what you are bringing to exchange what you are offering he doesn't like or she doesn't like she says no uh, I don't need that what are you gonna do you are trying to exchange something that you have for something else that somebody else has that person doesn't like what you have no exchange you can't satisfy you can't fulfill your needs and wants you can't get what you need from the other person these are weaknesses and there were so many other flops transporting difficulties transporting storage difficulties in storage storing the goods until somebody comes to exchange these were very big flops very big you know weaknesses which led to the unsuccessful end of barter system i mean barter system gradually went down people were having problems too many problems but one point in time ended the barter system not like from this point barter system ended no i told you things happen gradually so there are no clear cut points and on this date but system stopped and from this day onwards another stage another era started no children not like that barter system was going down gradually people were you know moving away from barter system because those difficulties those flops were there but this point in time this event changed the bar system what is the event children money was introduced money gradually money was coming to use again money did not fall from the sky notes and coins did not appear just like a tada moment no money came into usage a little by little first there were pieces of metal people were offering pieces of metal and they were calling it money to exchange for goods they were asking the goods that somebody else had and they were offering money not the notes and coins that we use today but commodities pieces of metal teeth of tigers and animals gold pieces things like that so money came into the world and businesses explode literally businesses were starting were happening everywhere because people had what what something that they could exchange for goods they could pay for goods that is money so remember children money 
is a medium of exchange. I'll write it here. Medium of exchange. Another point that you can take into your heads, take this point right now. Money is a medium of exchange. Likewise, children, there are many, many other stages, many, many turning points in businesses, uh, like industrial revolution. Globalization, many, many turning points or events which happened in the evolution of business, which changed businesses, broadened and evolved, businesses evolved because of these main events. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm stressing this point. In your syllabus, children, there is no uh, organized chart or uh, stages given, but your syllabus talks about self-sufficient, being self-sufficient, and start of trade, barter system, and ICT, information, communication technology, which led to globalization. Those points in time changed businesses and the way businesses happened. Remember, important points. Right. Why is this last stage? Why is it given this way? I don't know. You tell me. Why is it given in a cloud? or in a bubble. This is the present day of business. The present day of business. All the businesses, not, if not all, most of the businesses are using electronic mediums, electronic ways, online methods to do business. So, e-commerce means electronic commerce, e-business means electronic business. You and me, right now, we are in this stage, this present day. We have so passing so many stages, we have come to this stage today. So, these turning points or these major events in time, which changed, which changed the way businesses happened, the way businesses took place. These are the changing points or turning points in the evolution of business. So with that, we are done. We are done with this part, which is the very first basic uh, concepts of business. And we can move on. Remember the main points. So being self-sufficient is direct production. Moving on to barter system is exchanging of goods with other goods. Exchanging of goods and services with other goods and services. Barter system. Introduction of money which expanded businesses and the way businesses happened. Introduction of money and globalization and electronic commerce, electronic business. Right, let's move on. We are going to talk about why businesses are formed. What is the purpose? The target. You can see this subtopic. Right? That's what we are going to discuss. What are objectives, children? What? 
objectives objectives are aims targets or if i can make it even more clear to you i can tell you this remember that goals what are your goals what are the goals or targets of a business that's what we are going to discuss objectives are aims or targets all right mainly aims or targets goals are divided into two as main objectives and sub objectives which means the main targets and other targets other aims you know people have main things prioritized those are the main targets what can you see what is the main target what is the main aim main aim of course it's earning profits any business has the main aim or the main goal of earning profits but remember children there are businesses who do not have a profit motive i must mention it here you're going to learn in the future that there are businesses they do not have a profit motive they do not aim to have profits they do not have a profit earning objective those are for later for now you must realize that main objective of any business is earning profits earning profits second target or objective what is it you tell me what is it increasing customer satisfaction obviously obviously yes customers are the people who like who have the wanting to use our products customers are the people who have the wanting and the, who are ready to uh, buy and use our products if if we are a business our customers they come to buy our products maybe goods maybe services that we offer whatever those customers must be satisfied they must be satisfied they must be happy to use happy to have our products to buy to spend money they must be ready to spend money on our products to buy our products if we satisfy them the customers they will come again they will be loyal customers of our business they will be ready to spend more so increasing customer satisfaction is very important to succeed as a business as i told you earlier profit oriented profit oriented businesses must have this target this objective to what is the, the second objective increasing customer satisfaction because if they are satisfied i mean the customers they will come again the business will have more customers more transactions that means more profit it relates right so you have to satisfy your customers with your products your product must be high in quality and reasonable price with a reasonable price so they will have satisfaction they will come again to your business they will customers 
will always buy your products, which will earn you more profits. So, main objectives, main targets. Move down. What are the sub objectives? Businesses have these other objectives too. Not that they are less important, but not main, mainly uh, the targets or the aims of a business, not the main aims. But these are important too. First one, you tell me. What is the first one? Increasing quality of goods. If your goods are high in quality, with a reasonable price, again, you will attract more customers. More customers means more profits. So, this too relates again to profits. Remember, increasing the quality, maintaining the quality, increasing the quality of the goods that you provide as a business. That must be one of your targets. Sub. Second sub, generating employment opportunities. Who are employees? Let's talk about a business and the way a business operates or a, the way business, a business is run. A business operates with a common target all the employees, the workers, employees means the workers, they should have the common target in their mind. Their objective, their target must be to support or to align with the business objective or the business target. If it is earning profit, they must work to increase the profit. To make the business success, to make the business a success. Clear, right? So, generating more employment opportunities means the business, business is growing. The business is growing. Employees must be also treated well and they must be treated fairly and they also must have a benefit, a return for the service that they provide for the company or for the business. So, generating employment opportunities and um, that also must be taken into your head as a main, not a main, a sub objective of a business. As I told you, treating them fairly, treating them well, giving a fair return for the service that they offer your staff, your workers and treating, making them uh, happy, making them satisfied, just like you make customers satisfied. You must be able to make employees motivated so they will give you more, they will serve you better. That is also a target of a business. Finally, I have in included this point Children, this is not in your book. This is not in your book, but remember this. This is also a valid point. Social welfare. In the present day, we call it CSR. CSR. Corporate Social Responsibility. That is out of your syllabus, but it's better. It's better for your for your knowledge, if you can remember. Social welfare. That means companies, businesses have a responsibility uh, to ensure the welfare of the society, because the society is what supports them. In the society, they exist. Everyone. Every one of us, including. All the businesses. So society, the welfare of the society is also must be targeted 
by any distance. With that, we conclude this part of uh, the lesson, which is the objectives or the targets, aims of businesses. Remember the main targets and the sub targets or sub objectives. At least take uh, two points from the sub objectives, at least two points. But remember the main ones. Remember the main ones. The main two you must remember increasing profits, increasing customer satisfaction. What do we have next? Needs. Children, I told you, you must remember. The base or the main purpose or the reason for businesses to exist is human needs and wants. Can you remember the definition of businesses? What is a business? Can you tell me? What is a business? Yes, you are right. A business is any activity, any economic activity, which is done to fulfill our needs and wants. That is the simple definition that I began the lesson with. I started the lesson with that, remember? Businesses are economic activities which fulfills our needs and wants, human needs and wants. So needs and wants is maybe the most important reason for businesses to exist in this world. The base, base of any business. What are needs? The picture shows you something, right? Let's focus on the definition. Basic requirements must be fulfilled in order to survive. Survive. You know what survival is? You know what survival means, right? Survival, of course. As humans, we all survive. We have to survive first, right? To do whatever that we that we have in our lives to achieve whatever that we hope to achieve. First, we must survive. So these basic requirements that must be fulfilled to live, those are needs. What are the basic requirements that you have? You tell me, what are the basic, the most basic the fundamental things that you need to live, to carry on with life. If, if, if you don't have these things, you're going to die or you're, you're not going to survive. Those needs, those are the needs. First, food, food of course, food and water. Can you survive without food? Can you? Obviously, no. It's not possible, right? Maybe you will survive for one day. Maybe you will, if you are strong enough, you will survive for two days. Maximum three days. Without food, you're going to die. You can't even survive. You can't even go on one day without water. Try. Try and see whether you can live, whether you can survive without these two. Cry if you like. The very first basic need of humans is food and water. Next, we'll take this. Clothing. 
What are you wearing right now? Clothes. Can you stay without clothes? <laughs> no. Don't try it, okay? Don't try it. No, you can't survive without clothes, children. You know, when I teach these things, the basic needs, people, children, they ask me, so why, 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 what do you say? Why do you, why do you, why do you say that people can't survive without clothes? Why do you say that, sir? Why, if you don't wear anything, are you gonna die? Well, think about it. Are you gonna die without clothes? Maybe not. Maybe not immediately. You're gonna die eventually, right? Your body is covered with clothes. You just don't wear the clothes only for the sake of showing your fashion. No, that is not the main point of having clothes on. That is not the main point. Fashion, style. Main point, the main purpose of having clothes on is to protect your body. Just think, without any, any of these clothes, will you be able to survive the rains, the, 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 the sun, the scorching sun, the heat, the snow? Children, think of the entire world. Think of the snowing countries. The countries with sub-zero temperatures. Can they survive without clothes? No. They will not survive even one day. So, we are talking about the entire human race here. Not only us. People can't survive without clothes. So, that's a basic need. Basic need, remember. Clothing. So, we have food and water. Clothing. Third basic need is what? Shelter. We need a shelter over our heads. A house. Again, children sometimes ask me, Sir, is, is, is it, are you telling me that, are you telling us that without a house, people are going to die? If, 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 if a man doesn't have a house, a shelter, is he going to die? Well, maybe not. Not immediately. But he's going to die eventually, right? He can't protect himself from the sun, the scorching sun, just like clothes. From the rain, from the snow, from the temperatures, from the cold temperatures. If no shelter, you can't survive. Just think. <clears throat> Use your imagination. Right? Even the beggars, the, the, the homeless people, the innocent people who are on the road, on the streets, they find a shelter. They find some sort of a shelter in the rainy season, when it rains. I'm sure that you have seen. You can't survive without shelter. No. Children, three basic needs. Food and water, clothing, shelter. Three basic needs. One, two, three. Very important, children. Every exam, every past paper, if you check, most of the time the multiple choice paper, MCQ paper, asks about human needs. So remember, there are three basic needs. Again, I'm repeating, food and water, clothing, shelter. Let's write them down. Food and water. Even if you say food, it's okay, children. Food, clothing, Shelter. Basic needs of humans. Three basic needs. 
why do I have all these other blanks for? Why do you think? Why? Well, obviously there are other needs. Let's find out, shall we? Fourth need, what do you think? What do you think, children? Fourth need. Well, if I write this word, health. Children always ask when we cover this part of the syllabus. So what do you mean by health? Health means, children, your health, your assurance that you are healthy. Medicine, not only medicine. Some people ask me, so is it medicine? Yeah, it's a basic need. Yeah, we all need medicine to survive. If we uh, fall sick, if we have a disease, we must take medicine, some sort of things. Not only medicine, you have to ensure your health, the entire health. To survive, you need to have a healthy existence. So health, if you prefer, you can remember it as medicine, but don't write medicine as a need, write always health. Fifth need. Why don't you tell me, what is the fifth need? What are the basic things that you must have in order to live this life? Why don't you tell me? No? Guess? Guess what? Education. It's a basic need, children. Basic need. Education. Again, children ask me, sir, if, if you don't get educated, are we going to die? Eventually, you're going to die. How? Education means no, nothing at all. You don't have no education at all. If that is the case, you can't survive. That is what we meant by education. You must be educated in some way. Some sort of education must be there to survive. Just think. No education, no nothing, uh, nothing in your uh, in yourself. You can't speak a language. You can't read. You can't write. You can't even read a board when you're walking on the street. You don't have any skill. You don't have any knowledge. How can you survive? How can you do a job? How can you do a business? How can you earn to satisfy your needs? You're not gonna have enough. To eat even without an earning so education is also very important to survive right sixth need security safety security Security. You need to be secured. You need to have a secure living. Um, you can't live in fear. Things like that. Um, and not, not necessarily having a, a security guard right in front of your house. Or having dogs, uh, watchdogs. Not necessarily those things. You need to have a security of, of your living. Uh, a job, a way of earning money. So your life is secured. You don't have to fear anything. You don't have to fear about your tomorrow. That is what we mean by security. Communication. Then we have transportation. down the line, down the list, we have these needs too in the present day. Communication is a need too. Transportation is a need too. 
you can't survive without fulfilling these needs. Fulfill must be fulfilled. Right. I hope that these basic needs of humans, the three basic needs, the three basic needs, hmm? food and water, clothing and shelter, with the other needs, health, education, security, communication and transportation. All these, I hope they are clear to you, they are our needs, must be fulfilled. Remember children, must be fulfilled. So basic requirements must be fulfilled, which must be fulfilled in order to survive. Those are the needs. We'll move on. With this picture, the image shows you the basic needs. Three basic needs. The three basic needs. Food and water. What is the next basic need? Most basic clothing and yes you are right shelter these are the three basic needs food and water clothing and shelter As we discussed so far, we know the basic needs by now and we know the other needs which are also considered as uh, um, needs, of course. The three basic needs, food and water, clothing and shelter. As you can see in the image, the three basic needs. Then we have the other needs health why don't you tell me yes you what education yeah security transportation and communication so on and so forth we'll move on to the wants okay now children this is getting more interesting right now. It's gonna get very interesting. Now, previously we discussed about wants. Wants? No, we discussed about needs. Don't get confused now. Children get, often they get confused between needs and wants. Remember, needs are the basic the most essential, fundamental, most essential things. Without needs, you can't live. You cannot survive. But these are wants. So previously we discussed about needs. Now we are going to look at what wants are. What do you think, children? What are wants? Any idea? What are wants? Well, it's given here. Different ways of satisfying needs. Again, needs are coming to the scene now. You know what needs are, right? I don't have to repeat. But different ways of satisfying needs. Those are called our wants. Let's take an example. We need food and water. Basic need. No question about that. No. No question. Basic need. Food and water. But do you need food right now? I'm talking about right at this moment. Maybe you're hungry. 
basic need. Everybody feels hunger. So food and water is the need. This is what we need, food and water. What do you like to have? Tell me, what do you like to have right now? To fulfill your hunger, you are hungry, you want something to eat, what do you like to have? There you go. Those are the wants. Some may say, hmm, hungry, I need food. Maybe I'll have rice. So, remember children, need, need is the basic essential thing. Food, that is the need. Everybody needs food. But what you would like to have to fulfill that need? Rice. That is your want. Some other child may say, no, I don't, I don't like rice. I'll have a pizza. There you go. Suit yourself. You want pizza? You'll have pizza. That's your want. If somebody asks me, so what do you like to have? I would say, I'd like to have a juice or a tea. That's my want. It's different. So, wants are the different things you like to have in order to satisfy your need. There you go. Look at the picture, children. You have various things, variety of things. These are your wants. These are your wants. See, you have in the supermarket, you are buying your groceries, your daily needs, your daily needs, food, but you don't go and ask, give me food, do you? You don't go to the shop or the grocery and ask, food, give me food. No, you don't do that. No, it's ridiculous. You have to say what you want, what you like to have. You have cornflakes, oats, rice, sugar, eggs, meat, prawns. What things you like, what things you like, those are your wants, right? You take them to satisfy your need. Remember, let's take the need of clothes. You have a world of things to satisfy your need of clothes. Clothing, that's a need, basic need. Food and water, clothing. Basic need is the clothing, but what you like to have, what you like to have to satisfy your need of clothing. It's a world of choices you have. If you are a boy, if you are a male, you have trousers, the longs, the shorts, you have hats, you have caps, some like caps, some like hats, shirts, some like t-shirts. You have sunglasses, shades, you have bags, you have you have ties, you have bows. What do you like to have? Those are your wants. But remember children, again, 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 I'm telling you, you are satisfying your basic needs with what you like to have, right? If you are a lady, if you are a girl, if you are a female, you have, oh my God, I'm not gonna go to those. You have a world of things that you want. So that is to satisfy your need, what you want. What do you want? That is what you like to have. It's unlimited, children. Wants are unlimited. Remember, take it to your heads right now. Needs are only three when it comes to the basic needs. Needs are only three 
the basic, the very basic needs. And with the other needs, there are like eight, nine needs. But wants, only three, only four, only six, only ten, only twelve. No. Wants are unlimited. Because that's what you like to have. Right. It's very clear. I know that it's clear. So, these are the basic concepts of businesses. Businesses are formed because the needs and wants of humans, based on the needs and wants of humans. They produce and provide things, goods and services, to satisfy our needs and wants. Simple. Let's move on. All right, children. Next, we have the features or characteristics. What things are needs? We know what things are needs. What sort of characteristics? In what nature can you find? What nature can you find in needs? And what nature can you find in wants? We'll be discussing that in the next session. So, what things we discussed today? I hope you remember all the points. Shall I give you a recap? Sure. We discussed the basic concepts of business. What is a business? Two definitions. Choose whatever you like. Evolution of business. The, the stages, main stages or turning points in business. Evolution of business. Then we discussed about the objectives, the targets, aims of a business. Main aims, main goals and sub-objectives or sub-aims that businesses have. We talked about the needs, basic needs of humans, three basic needs and the other main needs. Then we moved on to wants. Wants how need a need is satisfied with what you like to have and that those are wants i hope these things these main parts or the main sections in the first lesson that we discussed today i hope everything is clear to you we'll meet with the next section or with the, with the next part the subtopic those are the characteristics of needs and wants. Thank you, children.